Um, the memory speed is a lot less important when it comes to the, why did I go to 100% fan speed? I think it crashed. <laughs> I don't see it spinning. Cut. <laughs> what is it checking? Change of pace. Today's video is going to be how to make a computer that won't boot boot. <laughs> Many of us are working and learning from home during these changing times, and Micro Center has what you need to create a seamless work or learn from home setup, including laptops, desktops, webcams, and more. Micro Center has adjusted store hours as well as limited the capacity of customers to create a safe shopping experience, but also has many essential items available via their online store. And for those of you practicing social distancing but still need to get your daily dose of tech, Micro Center has a new community forum where you can discuss and share your favorite tech and setups, including a chance to win a $500 gift card. To learn more about how to get your essential tech needs from Micro Center and to visit the community, click the link in the description below. I don't get it. All I did was put the RAM back to stock. This was booting five minutes ago, like literally. <laughs> all right, has this ever happened to you? You go to turn on your computer and it was working perfectly fine and now suddenly you've got all this crap happening. Well, let's go ahead and go through the troubleshooting steps to fix your machine. This particular motherboard, the EVGA Z390 Dark, has a 9900KS installed. We did put the KS in here, right? This is the KS, I think. You put it in there. I don't remember. <laughs> it's got a 9900K, maybe S, in there. This particular motherboard, fortunately, has a surface-mounted clear CMOS button. It also has one on the back. For your particular motherboard, if you don't have a button that's usually red or black on the back side or on the surface of your motherboard uh, that says clear CMOS or just CMOS, then you probably have a jumper, which is two pins that you've got to touch some metal on or put a little jumper cap on there. Refer to your motherbo motherboard manufacturer manual, uh, which you can find online on your phone or whatever if your computer isn't booting, and find out exactly how to clear the CMOS. That is the first step. What that will do is remove any sort of overclock, any sort of settings that you've adjusted in your BIOS of your motherboard. If you've never changed anything, I've, I've heard this a lot too. I've never changed anything in my motherboard. Why am I suddenly blue screening? What this also will force is a retraining of memory. So you'd be surprised. Obviously this happened because I changed something with memory and I don't think the memory retrained, which hopefully now, and you can do this with the CPU and the PC running, it's gonna shut it down, hold it for about 10 seconds. Usually I only need to do like three or four, but I'm gonna hold it for longer. When you let go, it might immediately reboot on its own. Not in this case. Oh, it did, okay. It's doing a power cycle. This may or may not get us back up and running. What, you'll, what this is gonna do though, and you need to keep in mind, this is gonna remove any fan profiles that you may have set up inside the BIOS. It's gonna change any sort of, um, like, boot order I was gonna say, it's gonna, your boot order. If you're running a motherboard controlled RAID setup, it could also potentially undo that. I don't run motherboard RAID, we use RAID cards and such for just such a reason. But if you start experiencing problems like this, I can't help. It went from, I can't boot to, oh, we booted. <laughs> the little, now this is also what's nice about EVGA boards is the fact that they have a surface mounted speaker that brings us back to the whole like 286, 386, 486 days. And we're stuck on A6. Because I know one of the things that I did was I played around with the memory. I'm going to now turn off the power supply, hold the power button just for a few seconds to make sure all the caps are discharged. And we are going to reseat our memory. This is a free step. It doesn't cost any money to try it. And you'd be surprised how many times this alone, the reseating of memory can fix your problem. Well, that was a satisfying click. Let's see if we can get that again. Mm. I'm very happy with this social distance you're maintaining over here. Every time I move towards you, you're like, eh. <laughs> Hey, that's what, that's what Zoom lenses are for. <laughs> eh? Let's see now if it'll boot into Windows without a problem. Then we can get back to our regularly scheduled content. <laughs> uh, so because it crashed enough, repair automatic, or preparing automatic repair started and then it crashed. I'm gonna try reseating the graphics card. Cause that was the other piece of hardware we added to this. That's probably so cringy for people to watch. I don't know, we might have to try a different graphics card. Yeah. It's crashing right when it tries to load Windows. All right, so I just threw on our Strix 1660 Ti, just 
Another card. I put a, I put another NVIDIA card in here because of the driver. Same thing. Bad drive? Bad SATA cable? We know it's not the card. We know it's not the RAM. I'm gonna unplug the hard drive. Oh, that's quite the sharp bend on that SATA cable right there. And I did let it get really cold in here when we were gone for those three weeks and now suddenly we warmed it back up. One thing, believe it or not, that's worked for me in the past is switching the SATA ports. Let's see what happens. Not confident, but I have had this happen in the past. But because I know now that it's having a problem when it hands off to the hard drive and goes, all right, run the OS, and the hard drive just kind of goes. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. I can't even get it to go to safe mode because normally it would have gotten a safe mode on its own by now. I'm gonna flip to a different BIOS on the motherboard. I'm just curious now if this is a BIOS level problem or a hardware problem. I didn't tell it to turn on. <laughs> it just turned itself on. Uh, you saw that, right? My heads are right here. Here's haunted. <laughs> just got a two red lights and a no post like immediately on that BIOS. This is why I keep all my games on a different drive because if I have to reinstall the OS, we can get back up and running pretty quickly. Let's try a new SATA cable. Cause like I said, this one, you guys can't really see it. Had, it was like that for the longest time. And I've had SATA cables just go bad. I mean, that's what they do. <laughs> that's why it's pretty awesome to have all M.2 drives hanging around, huh? Yeah. If I have to repair the OS on this, it's gonna go on an M.2. I think you have like a different phone case every time I see you. Hey, it's a, it's a Razer phone case on an iPhone. Wait, what? What the f my, my test bench was like, I heard you were lacking some content. Here, let me hand you some something to work on. Because you're not six feet away from it. It's getting mad that you're not social distancing. <laughs> Should I just try the memory? All right, so we've got some basic ballistic RAM on here. It'll spin like three times and then lock up, right? Yeah, right there. Literally in the exact same spot. I'm gonna put in our install media and see if it can install. Because we're making it through all of our hardware tests. Uh, I hate installing windows. So one thing that we, well, I should say Phil has done around here that's been very helpful is he has kept our install media as up to date as we can kind of stay on top of. I think we're about one full version plus some updates behind. You don't have to keep using the vanilla Windows 10 or whatever and then do the crap ton of updates. You can update your install media, which gets you on the more latest version, which a lot less updates to install. Eventually, we'll just start doing imaging around here, Phil. When we get a new setup and a new test bench, we'll just image it. That way we can re-image when these problems happen, you know, like a real IT expert would do. And I was in charge of doing for a long time, but I hate doing. Anyway, digressing. If we start the installation and it works, then it's just gonna mean that somehow between the last time we used this rig was with the painting of the heat, the heat sink, where we painted it black. That was the last time we used this and it worked fine. Yeah, it's totally locked up trying to do anything past post or working with Windows at all. And that should be booting off that USB stick, not anything else. So we're back to it being a problem here. The next logical thing for me to do is to update the BIOS on the motherboard. I don't, I mean, something could have corrupted with the BIOS. We've been doing lots of overclocking. We've put this thing under some serious stress. It doesn't mean something couldn't have somehow gotten corrupted in the BIOS, which we can then fix with the BIOS flash. I'm happy that it's not the drive because I don't want to start all over again with the Windows installation. I hate doing it as install. So what I think we're gonna have to do right now is BIOS flash. But I mean, I switched our BIOS and that didn't help, right? Okay, one other thing that I did recently do was just install this block back on here. I, it, it's not something that's common with Intel, but I have to wonder if maybe I over tightened this slightly, which could have be pushing on the block at an odd angle or something on the CPU. As weird as it might sound, I haven't tried unplugging the keyboard and mouse. Yeah, and we've had this cheap ass cord like this. And if there's some sort of a short in the cord maybe, when it initializes the USB, it works inside of BIOS, but who knows? In the order of simple possible solutions, we should have started here with the peripherals. I've had, 
You know, I've also had on Skunk Works. <clears throat> it's weird you say peripherals correctly now. Because everyone complained about me saying peripherals. <laughs> I had a mouse once on Skunk Works that would make it take about 45 extra seconds to boot. Same thing. Oh, it's rare that I'm stumped, but I'm getting there. So we believe that a lot of the problem is happening when it hands off to the driver for the graphics. We're gonna switch from an NVIDIA graphics card to an AMD card. I'm running out of ideas quickly here because the next logical thing that I would do, quite honestly, is just switch the motherboard, which I'm starting to think might end up having to happen. I don't think the board is bad, I really don't. But when you're doing process of elimination, you, you just have to start ruling out the variables and the only thing left is motherboard and CPU at this point. I'm frustrated right now, so what must the average user feel at this point? Yes. Probably this is the point at which they get on their phone and they're like, hey Jay, I'm having a problem. And it's like, I wish I could help with all those problems, but you see how hard of a time I'm having, having access to the hardware. I can't, it's very difficult for me to give you any sort of direction to aim when I'm not there. We just have no video and it's not doing anything now, look. <laughs> PCI slot? That's the next step. Let's move it to another slot. I'm gonna do a clear CMOS though right now, just for good measure. It's when it's handing off from the post to the external operating whatever, whether it be the USB stick or the hard drive or Windows or whatever. Not that I think it's gonna matter. I applied an overclock. I reapplied the overclock. So it doesn't like not being overclocked? What? <laughs> we have a theory. <clears throat> we have a theory. Our theory is that the KS might need potentially a little more voltage. And so what's happening is at the BIOS level, the reason why your temperatures are always higher when you're in the BIOS is because it kind of pumps more voltage and more clock speed into the GPU. It, it ramps it up to its max speed and such. When it hands off to Windows, it's then controlled by the Windows environment and the Intel speed step and all that stuff. So we think when it was handing off to Windows, it was bringing the voltage too low. It's a really weird theory that we can't prove, but it's so consistent. We think that's what's happening, which is why when I reapplied the manual overclock to five gigahertz, I didn't touch the voltage, I left it to auto. But what auto is gonna do is it's gonna use this kind of a speed slash voltage chart to say, oh, at five gigs, we need this much voltage. And since we're sort of locking it there, I think it's giving us the voltage we need to get into the OS and work just fine. So what we're gonna do right now is I'm going to now restart and I'm gonna leave the RAM, because the RAM is also at XMP, I put that back. So I changed two things, which means now I'm not sure exactly which one fixed it, the RAM or the CPU. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna put the CPU back to auto, but I'm gonna leave the RAM at the XMP and see what happens. See, it's all working normal now. So it's at manual right now. See, it's manual 50, multiplier 50, auto on the ring ratio and zero on the AVX offset. That's what I did. And then on memory, I enabled XMP profile one, which was one of the things we were gonna talk about in this, the original topic of this video. I'm gonna put the OC back to auto, because if we look at the voltage, look at the voltage it's pumping to it right now. 1.352 volts. That's not what it calls for under its normal conditions, nor is that what a standard non-KS, just a regular K calls for. So if I reboot this, put the voltage and the stock multiplier and all that back, I have a suspicion we might crash. And if that's the case, I'm hoping a BIOS flash will fix it. Oh, there it is. So is it RAM all along? Or did we just give it basically a digital kick? Like the way they started the Millennium Falcon. I wanna re-enable optimized defaults right now and just see if it goes back to the problem. Default mode, yes. Maybe that's good. It just did it again. It just crashed again. The fans ramped up and it's now Locked up. I'll do a clear CMOS. Then I'll go into the settings, reapply the overclock like I did. If it boots. What the f <laughs> this computer sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so what it needed was the overclock to boot, which means if, does that mean that if somebody built this system right now, they would think they had bad hardware because it never would have booted from the beginning. But I never updated the BIOS on this motherboard. 
But I'm also the kind of guy that goes on the first boot, goes right into the BIOS and immediately pushes the overclocks because I know what they can run. So I don't think I've ever run this thing stock. All right, let's go ahead and just do the flash tool. It's updating our BIOS right now. Yeah. Just stock. It's all stock. It worked. <laughs> I thought you spoke too soon. For a second. <laughs> so here's our theory. I probably overclocked this CPU from the moment I built it. Because I wanted to do a video showing you guys what happens when you try to overclock your RAM and how it's gonna affect performance and graphics card, uh, FPS and all that sort of stuff when you use a high-end graphics card like a 2080 Ti. Because there's, you know, if you're not, if you're not bottlenecking your CPU in any way, you're probably not gonna see any difference with, with RAM speed. It's the first time I reverted it back to default to try and show you guys that, which is the first time this thing would ever tried to boot. Otherwise we would have probably noticed this six months ago when we built this test bench. So we went through all the troubleshooting steps when we could have just done a BIOS flash at the start. To be fair, a BIOS flash is not the first thing I recommend people do because it could also be the most damaging thing you can do if you do it incorrectly. And what I mean by that is your cat or your dog unplugs your power cable while it's in the middle of writing and you have a single BIOS uh, motherboard, which most motherboards are a single BIOS. You don't have a switchable switch like this to just be up and running with another BIOS. Um, a power failure, lightning strike, something. You're, brownout in the middle of, it's happened plenty of times where the power has been interrupted if you don't have a UPS or whatever that's keeping your system up and running during a BIOS flash. Or if you're flashing it over USB and you get impatient <coughs> because it's just at a black screen and you don't know what's going on in your- Because it's not telling you on the screen what progress it is. So you just restart it or pull it out in the middle of a BIOS flash. That's all problematic. So it's never really the first thing I recommend, although EVGA's Windows batch installer thing is pretty good at doing redundancy checking as it's going. So, because we just spent the last three hours, wow, three hours. <laughs> it's almost one o'clock. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. 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 You did all that? Wow. 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 <laughs> so, because we just spent the last three hours figuring all this out, we're gonna go ahead and just make this a video and then we'll go back to the original video we intended to do on our next video. So thanks for watching guys. Um, that was a simple fix. And it turns out that the BIOS was probably not supplying enough voltage, which is funny because Phil's theory was like, well, you overclocked the, or you put the voltage up for the CPU. That doesn't, that doesn't help all the system agent voltage, which is gonna be like PCIe voltage and the VIN voltage in for the CPU. And then he was in the middle of explaining why he thinks that my, my single fix didn't make a difference. And then it booted and he was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> so probably none of this would have happened if it were a K and not a KS. KS for keeping it stupid. All right, guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you on Wednesday. Well, it's weird because my- <sighs> I need my coffee. <sighs>